You're watching 25 News Now at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. And I'm Karina Garcia. 39-year-old Alexandro Reyes was sentenced Tuesday to 40 years in prison for the beating death of 67-year-old Jesus Sanchez Nino of Victoria. Neighbors called 911 after finding Nino unresponsive in his yard on the night of June 19, 2023. Witnesses had seen the two men together earlier in the day. Reyes must serve half of the sentence before being eligible for parole. Also in Victoria, 23-year-old Jacob Isaiah Solis received three separate prison sentences following the January 15 shooting incident at the Grove Apartments back in 2023. This episode resulted in the death of 39-year-old Julian Cruz from Victoria and 32-year-old Jarvis Livingston. 28-year-old Jasmine Joseph was left wounded. Solis faces 35 years in prison for the fatal shooting of Cruz. He also received two 20-year prison sentences for the aggravated assault on Livingston and Johnson. Solis will not be considered for parole until he has served at least half of the imposed sentences. 40-year-old Camilo Rodriguez of El Campo has been sentenced to 25 years in prison. The El Campo Leader News reports Rodriguez pleaded guilty to two counts of sexual assault of a child, a crime taking place on November 1st of 2014, and a single count of failure to abide by requirements to register on April 25th, 2021. His victim was just 15 years old. Rodriguez, a U.S. citizen, fled to Mexico and was captured there in January of 2021. The Victoria County Republican Women's Club invited all six mayoral candidates to their meeting earlier this evening. Jacob Sauceda and Carissa Winters were not in attendance. The remaining candidates answered several questions from their political stance to ideas about taxes. And we recently had all of the mayoral candidates live on 25 News Now to hear their various platforms. Now we're giving you a chance to learn more about their character and personality. We asked all of the mayoral candidates the same four questions. Our first question was for them to show as an important item in their home or office. Number two, talk to me about your dream job when you were a child. Number three, if you're elected mayor, what is your greatest fear? And finally, what is your favorite quote and why? I have a, a few, um, you know, sentimental items from family members that have either, you know, you know, passed on or, you know, things that I hold on to. My dream job was actually to be a lawyer. I always wanted to be a lawyer or have some involvement in law. I have always been fascinated by that process. Um, you know, as I got older, you know, I wanted to be a biologist and, and really my the the biggest dream was I wanted to be an archaeologist, but that was not like feasible, I guess. I felt like it was a feasible thing. Um, a gray sphere would be just, you know, blockades or things getting in the way of getting things done uh, the way that, you know, I would like to do for the people and um, do you know, for the people, what I feel like we should all have, you know, things that we need to, to work on and things that, you know, uh, may seem important to me, but doesn't seem important to other council members. But I feel like, you know, uh, I just want to represent and uh, the people and, and the, the demographics that we have in this town. Um, and so I feel like, you know, if I don't do a good enough job for them, then, you know, that would be disappointing for everybody. Um, I can't remember, I think it was Archimedes who said, uh, give me a lever and a fulcrum and I'll move the world. That's one of my favorite quotes ever. And I think it's true, you know, you just need a, a will and a way and you can get things done. That was Jacob Sauceda, also on the ballot, Josephine Solis, Duane Crocker, Peter, Peter Brown, Carissa Winters, Robert Bob Constantine. Early voting starts January 17th and runs through January 30th. Join us Saturday, February 3rd for complete coverage of the special mayoral election. Let's take a first look at your forecast with First Orange Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Pettis. Mac, it looks like we're getting on that old uh, seesaw, that weather seesaw. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're low, the, then we're going to go up, and oh, then we're oh, next week. Whoa. That's exactly what we're going to get. We call it a roller coaster because uh, we're going to be cold in the morning, tomorrow morning, and then it war it's going to warm up. But then the big cold comes in early next week. Tonight, uh, we are under high pressure right about here. That's why it's so clear and so nice. Little high clouds rolling into the state, not a problem. There's our storm. That's the one that was here yesterday. It's making a wreck 
of all the people in the east. Coming up, we'll be talking about your extended forecast. And I have to tell you, there's the big chill coming in on Monday. So we need to get ready for the coldest air of the season so far. We'll be back with more coming up in just a few minutes. Mac, thank you. In New York, families seeking asylum are currently facing the threat of eviction. One of them being a pregnant woman and her husband. Maria Cuero from Venezuela tells us in Spanish she is eight months pregnant, and today she and her husband are being evicted from the Roe Hotel, where she's been living for the last five months. No puede tener papeles para poder trabajar. No. She says, we don't want to live like this. Creo que el gobernador... Angel Blanco, also from Venezuela, tells us in Spanish he's been looking after his 14-year-old son ever since his wife died. He tells us, I'm going to the Roosevelt Hotel to be reprocessed. According to city officials, 40 asylum seeker families must check out of the Roe Hotel on 8th Avenue and reprocess after receiving eviction notices. It's part of a strategy the city hoped would free up shelter space but controller Brad Lander says it's too harsh. We are launching an investigation. He says the city's policy has been poorly communicated and executed. To kick families out of shelter in the middle of winter time to displace kids from their school in the middle of the school year is honestly one of the cruelest things that New York City Hall has done in generations. Despite the eviction, some families could still be seen at 7 in the morning bringing their kids to school. City officials say they'll try to keep families who reapply for another 60 days of shelter near their children's school. Comptroller Brad Lander says he doubts that. You might have been in a homeless shelter in Brooklyn and you then get transferred and you wind up in a homeless shelter in the Bronx. And yes, under federal law, they're obligated to offer you a bus back, but it almost never works. You guys know how bad, unfortunately, the busing system is. Texas wants the Supreme Court to reject the Biden administration's request to remove razor wire at the border. The Border Patrol had to stop removing it last month on the order of a federal appeals court. Then, the Biden administration filed an emergency request to the Supreme Court to allow the practice to continue. The dispute stems from a lawsuit Texas filed last year to stop Border Patrol agents from cutting wire. That case is working its way through federal circuit court. Hot spots remain after an explosion at an historic hotel in Fort Worth Monday afternoon. At least 21 people had been injured. It happened at the Sandman Signature Hotel in the city's downtown. A Fort Worth police spokesperson warned today that some areas are still considered what they call immediate danger zones. Anything inside the immediate hot zone here on 8th, between 7th and 9th and 7th uh, Houston, the 7th and 9th at Throckmorton, it is considered an immediate danger zone. No fatalities reported from the blast, which authorities described as, quote, some type of gas explosion, unquote. Authorities say at least one of the injured was listed in critical condition and four sustained serious injuries. An El Paso man accused of stalking Shakira told a judge in Bon Court today that the superstar is his wife. 56-year-old Daniel John Baltier is facing one count of stalking after being arrested outside the singer's Miami Beach home Monday. Sec uh, Shakira's security director had alerted police after he made several social media posts about her. Police took him into custody after he arrived at Shakira's home in a taxi around 12.45 a.m. on Monday. The man is also charged with hiring a vehicle for intent to defraud for not paying the $70 taxi fare. Next Monday, January 15th, is the Martin Luther King March and Program. The march starts at 10 a.m. and begins at the Martin Luther King Park on 3808 Callis Street. It will then end at St. Peter's Baptist Church, where a program celebrating the late Reverend Dr. King will take place. Guest speaker and civil rights attorney Matthew Manning will be attending the program. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell so you can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. Stay with us. Rescue operations continued into its ninth day after that fatal earthquake hit parts of Japan. The total number of those dead straight ahead on 25 News Now at 10. Also ahead, the Biden administration has launched a new initiative aimed at reducing preventable deaths in the U.S. Hi, I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs with the Victoria Police Department. 
Victoria Crime Stoppers is seeking information about the murder of Rudy Lee Condy. On April 30th, 2007, 37 year old Rudy Condy was found deceased in his home in the 1600 block of East Commercial Street. The investigation revealed that Condy died from blunt force trauma injuries. If you have any information about the murder of Rudy Lee Condy, please call Victoria Crime Stoppers at 361 572 4200. You can also submit a tip by using the P3 Tip app on your Android or Apple device or by using our website at www.crimestoppersvictoria.com. All tips are anonymous, and if you give information that leads to an arrest or charges being filed, you could earn a cash reward. On behalf of Crime Stoppers, I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs. Rescue operations at a quake-hit area in Japan has entered its ninth day. About 100 officers searched for the survivors, and one city hit particularly hard by the earthquake, leaving at least 81 people dead. And a massive fire broke out immediately after that quake burned down roughly 200 houses and other buildings. The total death toll from the quake reached 202 on January 2nd. 102 people remain unaccounted for. A group of Tennessee, child, Tennessee children ranging from 5 to 10 years old are calling for gun reform. They address media as the state's politicians began the year's legislature session today. Their call to action comes in the wake of last year's Covenant School shooting in Nashville, which left three children and three adults dead. Since that shooting, gun reform has been a key issue before Tennessee state legislature. The children who spoke had said it's time for change to make their schools, churches and homes safer again. Today we need to change things again because, because people in America are being hurt by guns and we have to help them. For myself and my sisters and for the kids who died and can't ask, I ask our lawmakers to be brave and work together to make our country a better place. Tennessee's governor called for a special session of the legislature in July on possible gun reform, but a law passed in that session focused mainly on boosting security on school campuses, not access to guns. Pregnancy can be an exciting time for families, but it also comes with risks. Yes, studies show maternal mortality rates in the United States have been on the rise for decades. The death rates of women during and shortly after pregnancy got worse in 2021, according to new data from the National Vital Statistics System. Overall, black women had the highest mortality rates. When they considered age, women 40 years and older had higher mortality rates. These trends have been consistent for years. For black women, discrimination in health care settings and limited access to care may contribute to higher mortality rates. More studies are needed to find out how we can improve maternal care. The CDC says women of reproductive age should maintain a healthy weight and diet and treat underlying health problems to reduce their risk before becoming pregnant. With this Medical Minute, I'm M. Wynn, ABC News. 
The Biden administration has launched a new public-private partnership called the Health Care Rewards to Achieve Improve Outcomes, or HEROES program, in an effort to reduce preventable deaths. Department of Health and Human Services authorities will pick initiatives that address two of four potential focus areas, including opioid overdoses, maternal mortality, and severe complications during pregnancy and birth. The programs will seek out investors or stakeholders in the promise of future pavement for positive outcomes. NASA is pushing its moon flight and moon landing dates further into the future because of safety and technical issues. NASA is now planning to send four astronauts around the moon in September 2025, and the moon landing is slated for September 2026. The moon landing effort has been delayed repeatedly over the past decade, adding billions of dollars to the cost. Government audits project the total program cost at $93 billion through 2025. And here's your viewer poll this evening. Scan that QR code on your screen to vote now. Here's the question. How important is it for the United States to land on the moon again? Very important, somewhat important, or not important? And Karina, you see all three choices yeah, are the double right digits in the vote percentages, which is great. And the Total, let's see, for 46%, not important. That is the highest percentage. There you Alrighty. go. Thank you for voting. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part. And now we send it off to Mac. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. 45 degrees right about now. We're getting down to the upper 30s tonight. Clear skies, dry air, all that the heat just radiates up into the atmosphere. We did get up to 61 today, and of course, in the next few days, that 61 is going to be a distant memory. We're looking for much colder weather next week. We're calling it, I'm calling it, the big chill. Or we can call it the frozen blizzard. I don't know, one of those. It's going to be cold next week. We'll be talking about it coming up in just a moment. Welcome back, everybody. How did your car look this morning? Get a load of this one. Uh, it's actually a black car, but uh, this is all the dirt that fell uh, onto our cars from West Texas. Remember the storms that came up, uh, came across West Texas. The wind was strong, 40, 50 miles an hour, kicked it up into the high altitudes. And then when it rained down, it, it just brought it back down. Uh, car wash is going to be real busy over the next couple of days. and. 
maybe you just want to do it at home. And we want to thank our friends at the Lavaca Emergency Management Operations Center. They got out there after the storms went through yesterday afternoon and took this wonderful picture. Apparently, the rainbow ends in Hallettsville. We're glad to know that because we always wondered, where does it go? <laughs> anyway, all the stormy weather is long gone. In fact, that's the big stuff that's hitting uh, the East Coast right now. For us, we had a beautiful day, lots of sunshine, a little bit of high clouds rolling back into the area, but that's not going to be enough to um, you know, me mess up the day. In fact, it'll be mostly sunny with just high thin clouds rolling through the area. You can see it coming across all the way from the Pacific. High pressure is what's keeping us on the very nice side of things. Uh, it's gonna give us some clear cold nights and some sunny mild days. There's our storm causing all kinds of havoc, but that one's gone as far as we're concerned. That one on the Northwest is what's going to be visiting us by the time we get to Friday. And then all of our temperatures are really going to start changing. Now, these are the current temperatures. You can see how we're at 45, San Antonio's at 39. I just wanted to show you that it's, you know, 12 and 10 up north. Now, here is where all the cloud cover and rain and snow is occurring. But uh, it is winter in other places, not so much here. That's a wind advisory uh, for uh, south of us. But uh, all the maps uh, are showing all kinds of advisories. Look at this. We got wind advisories, snow advisories, winter storm advisories, flooding advisories. And then they had about 12 different uh, tornadoes in and around Florida this afternoon. Of course, they're going to have to figure all out what's happening by tomorrow. So what's happening in the future? We go from Wednesday. And you can see high pressure basically transitions across our area so that very rapidly we'll start getting that southeasterly wind, which will warm us up. But there on Thursday, you see how the storm does start crossing the Rockies, just like the last one. And the big question is, will it produce any rain for our area? At this point in time, it's uh, that much. It's very little. I'll show you why in a moment. You can see how the panhandle will get even more uh, snow again, the North Texas will get a lot of it, but we're going to be just barely. 39 tonight is our low temperature, 35 up in Nixon and the Gonzales will be down to 34 tomorrow. However, with the sunshine, we'll get up into the 60s. Here's your uh, day planner for those of you in Port Lavaca, 46 in the morning, up to 68. Looking for sun, maybe some high clouds. Otherwise, I think it's going to be a pretty good day maybe a little fishing. The winds have settled down. That's a good thing. We were at 35 miles an hour this morning. 37 the low in Cuero, the high at 70 with abundant sunshine. And here's the big thing, the big long extended outlook. Now that's tomorrow and Thursday are looking good. We'll warm up to the 70s. Here's the front that may or may not give us any rain. So the weekend's looking good, but Monday is the cold blast. By the time we get to Tuesday, we're looking for morning temperatures into the 20s for about three days. So we're gonna have a hard freeze, coldest weather that we've had so far this season. And you need to get ready to take care of the, the pets, the plants, the pipes, and the people too. All right, that's your seven day forecast. Reminding everybody we do have a QR code and we'd love for you to scan that, put Crossroads today on your phone because Zach Brown has that on his phone. I Oh, I have it. And the parents of these kids can watch their two youngins get the opportunity of a lifetime. I'll have that in sports.
Two stars from Victoria East get quite the opportunity next week at AT&T Stadium. Carlin Helms and Michael Pena will be participating in the Dream All-American Bowl. Out of thousands, these two stars were amongst the select few to be chosen to participate in this game. 180 to be exact. Helms, just a freshman, excited about the opportunity to get more exposure and become an even better version of himself. Senior Michael Pena says he already has offers, but getting the chance to play in front of more scouts and make himself better is worth the trip. It's it's a good opportunity to test what I can do against a wider range instead of just like the Victoria and my normal teams. It shows that I think that I'm able to work more and that I truly care about my sport and love my sport. It's like a dream come true, but I've, I've been working so long and it's, it's paying off, I guess. There's going to be way more scouts over there and I should have more looks at me, but this this game is best of the best, so it's going to fine-tune me even more. Both guys also praised head coach Charlie Reeve and how much that, that entire coaching staff has made them. Out in Cuero, the cheerleaders with a bit of history placing amongst the best in the state UIL tournament. Coaches Ashley Helweg and Rachel Brown have done a fantastic job, and their girls' hard work has paid off. According to the Cuero record, the girls placed 18th in 2022, which was history for the program, and they topped that this year by finishing 15th in UIL state. And the boys could have used those ladies cheering them on tonight, taking on John F. Kennedy and looking for that first district win of the year. They could not get it. They do fall in the roost 51 to 37. But if you want a positive, Davin Lennon had double digits in scoring with 10. Dalen Gibbs had seven. They get another crack at it against Gonzalez on Friday. The girls, though, got revenge for the guys. They get the win 78 to 7. But how about a milestone for the ladies? Arissa Carbonara notches her 1,000th career point for the Lady Gobblers. Lucky 13 wins in a row. They also get Gonzalez on Friday. Oh, Yoakum fired up crowd over there cheering for their undefeated in district Yoakum Bulldogs and they play host to the Palacios Sharks. Yoakum's going to get on the board first off the assist from Zach Taylor to Jamar Hopkins. Yoakum opened up with a modest 4-0 run, but Palacios is going to answer nicely. Great pass and a good finish there. A few possessions later, a great spin move, layup good. Yoakum, however, does get the win 51-37. They stay undefeated in district play. The Yoakum girls also won over Palacios, and next up they get the Edna Cal girls who won tonight over the Rice Raiders 64-23. The Yoakum girls go to Edna this Friday. Edna still undefeated in district play. The St. Joseph girls have won again this game on the road, and they improved to 19-6 and 3-1 and and in district play. Jordy Ibarra leads the way for the girls, 19 points on the evening. Cassidy Nethery was next with 8 in the game, and they have another road game against Providence Catholic St. Joe back on a roll with their fifth win in a row. Another team that's been white hot this year. How about the Bloomington Bobcat girls? They get yet another win tonight, defeating the girls out of Luis 53 to 38. The girls with nine wins in a row. They go to Ganado on Friday. And I know that's not everybody. That's not even everybody in the same sport. We got soccer and more basketball tomorrow. That's it for your sports. Donna Karina, back to you. All right, thanks, Zach, and stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 10, we're going to take a last look at your weather. Plus, Twitch is implementing a new change to protect users on their site.
Speaks on Twitch. The streaming platform is taking a stand against harassment. Today, the company announced a major expansion of its misconduct policy. Twitch says it will ban users who harass members of its community, even if the harassment takes place off the site. Mm. The new policy allows Twitch to take action against users who mistreat people regardless of where it happens, whether it's online or on another social platform. The company has hired a law firm to help when harassment issues occur on these other sites. Here's a sneak peek of some of the electric vehicles Honda hopes to produce. The new ideas were shown today in Las Vegas. The first of the new EV models are expected to go into production in 2026. The concept vehicles are called the Saloon and Space Hub and will be part of Honda's Zero series. The Japanese automaker announced last year they invested $40 billion to create new electric vehicles. It plans to introduce 30 new EV brands globally by 2030. Right now, Honda is way behind a lot of the other yeah. car companies but as look far at that as Honda. EV, yeah, they look sharp. Well, they uh, look sharp, but they're not in production, you know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Toyota right. is way ahead. And you know what? Uh, wait till the Chinese start selling their cars here. That's oh. going to be amazing. Actually, the Chinese electric vehicle company is now the number one selling electric vehicle in the world. It has surpassed yeah. Tesla. Oh, wow. BYD. BYD. Yes, yes. BYD has sold more electric vehicles than Tesla. And Tesla market. is yeah. ginormous. So yeah. it's yeah. getting competitive. Yeah. Well, let me talk to you about what's happening tomorrow. You've got a beautiful day coming up. It's going to be chilly in the morning when you head out, but it's going to get up into the nice. 60s. Then Thursday is very nice. We get up into the 70s. Friday we have a front. It's mostly wind. I doubt if we'll have any real rain here. And then uh, the weekend, well, enjoy it while you can. And what you got to do is uh, wrap up your pipes. Uh, if you have a house that has elevated uh, floors and you, the pipes are open to the air, you got to get ready for that. Get the plants off the patio because by Monday night into Tuesday and Wednesday, we're looking at freezing temperatures here in the crossroads. Alrighty, thank you, Mac. The Indianapolis Zoo is expecting a new arrival of the rhino kind. A 19-year-old white rhinoceros is expected to give birth next month. It will be the zoo's first ever rhino calf, but this rhino's seventh. She came to the zoo early in June on a recommendation from the Association of Zoos and Aquarium Species Survival Plan. The program guides efforts to manage threatened and endangered species. Right now, white rhino populations in the wild are declining, but the new calf will bring the zoo's herd of rhinoceroses to five. How about that? Every time I say rhinoceroses, I want to say something like, a, it sounds like a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, they look like dinosaurs. Right, they do. They got, they got the, the sharp. They still got that. Yeah. Yeah, a little thingy. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you guys, and thank you for joining us for 25 News Now at 10. Joining Carolina Astorini, meteorologist Parker Cox, 25 News Now, sunrise starting.